Have you ever accidentally ripped off wires from a circuit board or maybe from an FPV camera? Well, I have twice. This camera right here is the Isheen TX-01S. Now it's like a standard little all-in-one camera VTX combo, but it's the TX-01S and the S stands for split, which means instead of the VTX, the video transmitter being attached to the camera directly, it's attached with wires. This is actually my favorite small ultra lightweight camera VTX system. I've used it on a number of quadcopters. You can see it right here on one of my oldest quadcopters. This is the second one that I ever built. Here's the transmitter and then the wires go down over here to the camera in front. I built this back in 2017 before brushless whoops really existed. This frame is made by Flex RC and it really does a good job protecting the props. It's a lot of fun. One amazing thing about this camera VTX system here is that this camera sees better in low light situations than any other small camera. I've used. Obviously it's not going to be as good as a bigger run cam or something like that or a fox here, but for such a tiny thing it does see really well in low light. So I used it on here and I love it. So later I got into tiny whoops or I guess we call them whoops. It's not actually a tiny whoop because that's an official name of a company. This is just an inexpensive Ishin quadcopter. I put this same video camera transmitter combo on a tiny whoop. It's awesome because the camera is protected back in here. It's very low profile. It doesn't stick up. The antenna doesn't stick up. The whole camera transmitter doesn't stick up. I just love using it on small quadcopters. I got frustrated with motors burning up on these little whoops though. So I decided I wanted to build some brushless whoops. So I built these. These frames are also made by Flex RC. They're called a Nano X. I believe this one's called a Pico X. Yeah, Pico X is the bigger one. And the Nano X is here. I made two different versions. I made one with 0703 motors and I made these with 1102 motors. These were a little heavier than they needed to be to fly well to have good flight times. And so I wanted to use really lightweight camera VTX combos that also stayed out of the way of the props. You can see the camera and the VTX on both of these is underneath the path of the props. I couldn't have anything that stuck up very high. And I also wanted a good camera, the best camera I could put on something this small and light. So I went with this TX-01S. The problem here came when I tried to build these. As you can see, the wires are extremely short between the camera and the VTX in here. They're also short in here, but they're a little bit longer. The problem was I wanted these wires really short, but I didn't want to solder wires together end to end partway through and shrink wrap it. I decided I wanted to unsolder the wires from one of the circuit boards, cut them and re-solder them on. Isheen used this black epoxy over the end of the wires on both the VTX and on the camera. And so what I did was I pried the epoxy off and then unsoldered the wires and cut them short, soldered them back on. Then I went on another one of these and I pulled the epoxy off and it came off of the positive and negative wires fine. But instead of coming off of the signal wire, let's see if you can see here. Try and zoom in. You can see in the middle of this epoxy here, that's the soldering pad that used to be part of this circuit board. It went right there, right in the middle right in the middle here of these, there were three soldering pads for the positive, negative, and signal, and it ripped the soldering pad clear off. I tried with a hobby knife and different things to get access to some of the traces that I could solder to. Couldn't do anything about it. It was really, really sad. And so, believe it or not, I tried it again with another one of these and it did the exact same thing. Came off of the positive and negative, but it ripped the soldering pad off of the signal wire. These sat around for months, maybe even a year. One day I decided I wanted to try and figure out how to make these work again. I did some internet research and I carefully looked up what these little letters and numbers meant on here. There's an SDA, an SCK, I believe. It's really hard to see. And then over here is CMES, CVES. I can't remember for sure. And over here's a ground, one of these. No, I think that one's the ground. Anyway, I ended up doing research, Googling these letters, trying to figure out what these all meant. And this one over here, that's this CMES or CVES, 
Turns out that's a type of video signal. So I thought, well, why don't I give it a try? And I took one of these that was damaged and I soldered the positive and negatives back on down here. And then I took the yellow wire and I soldered it on that pad that's that signal pad. And I plugged it in and it worked. So I fixed it. That made me really happy. That's a very tiny soldering job. It's very difficult to do, but I was able to do it and it worked. So that I ended up installing on my brother-in-law's whoop because he broke his camera and he broke one of the buttons off and he broke the antenna and this doesn't work anymore so I took his drone and I soldered one of these on that I had fixed so I still have one here that needs fixing and I'll get to that someday now I can show you what I did to solder on that wire onto that little tiny pad the first thing I'm going to do is remove the epoxy from the end of the wire Now I'm just plugging in the battery and making sure the VTX works with my goggles. I wanted to make sure that something is transmitting before I get the camera working. Unplug the battery again. Now take the camera and stick it onto some blue sticky tack. This was a trick I learned from Josh Bardwell. It really does help make small things much easier to solder. I did put the lens cap back on the camera so that the sticky tack wouldn't be directly against the lens. Now I'm getting some flux to put on the soldering pad and the end of the wire because the flux will make the solder joint a lot stronger. I keep two sizes of solder at my desk. I typically use the larger size for everything, but this is such a small soldering pad and a small piece of wire that I'm using my smaller solder. Now I'm tinning the really small CVBS soldering pad. Now I'm adding fresh flux to the wire. Each time you solder, the old flux burns off and you need new flux so that the joint can be strong. Now I'm finally soldering the wire onto the CVBS pad. And that's it. Now to just test that the camera's working. It works great. If this video was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. I do have a lot more videos coming.